So it was way back in episode 28 when we were traveling from Ibiza to the mainland. And I could smell this kind of burning rubber smell. At first we thought, well, maybe it's the engine, but I could kind of smell it coming from the instruments. The boat was on autopilot and just started going in all sorts of directions and then it just cut out. And we came down below and we actually smelt the drive unit that we realized something was pretty critically wrong with it. Unfortunately, we'd lost the dinghy, so we couldn't get ashore. So we had 600 miles ahead of us it's no bad thing, we don't mind a bit of hand steering, we really enjoy it, um, but it gets a bit tedious and it gets a bit exhausting after a while, particularly when there's only two of you doing the, the night watches. So when we got to Almiramar, I took it out. Put it on the nav table, had a look inside to see if there was anything obviously wrong with it, whether there was some loose wires, but uh, beyond that I had no idea how to diagnose this problem. If you look back on episode 30 when we had a problem with a rat, uh, we put a word out on the net if anybody had a terrier that could actually help us flush out the rat. Now Oscar came along um, and his owner and from SV and Pavidus he didn't flush the rat out because it was already dead, we didn't realise at the time. But we got talking and um, it turns out that he is an engineer. So when I asked him if he could fix the problem, he said no, but I'll show you how to do it. His philosophy is to increase the knowledge pool in the Liverboard Cruisers network so we can all start doing repairs for ourselves. And I'd like to carry that philosophy on as well. Um, our channel is uh, SV Impavidus. SV Impavidus, and you're doing how-tos and how to fix your boat up? And... Yeah, I've got a, a background of um, engineering and electrical work. With your boat, you know, what we'd like to do is come and, come and give you a hand to do it and pass the knowledge on. You know, if you've got knowledge, you should share it. Which, which is the main thing, is, is, with, is, is having the yeah. confidence to actually take it apart, Yeah, you know. diagnose it and then fix it. Well, as I said to you, you can't make it any worse, Woody, it's already broken. <laughs> <laughs> we look, first looked at the, re at the resistance, and the resistance was very low, so we thought there was something wrong. Most of the autopilots work in a similar way where a magnet uh, engages the drive to the wheel, and on your boat, when we engaged it, we got a, a smell of burning. <laughs> it's like almost a little cartoon puff of smoke. <laughs> it, it? it was, yeah. yeah. Let's have this apart. See if we can get at the coil. It certainly shouldn't smoke like that with 12 volts on it, so there's something wrong in there. Since we slide it on. There's a little allen key, look. That looks like stick that one up there, and now we know that's the next bit. And that should now slide easily and effortlessly off. The next bit that came off. Now, this is a 24 volt motor, but we can use 12 volts just to make sure that it's working and running. We've got negative there and positive on that one, and it's only 12 volts, so half the operating voltage of that. When we switch it on, okay, yeah, that little motor mm. drives a pulley. Yeah. inside here and that pulley goes on to another pulley this side, a little belt. Mm. You've then got a, what's called a dog clutch which this solenoid operates. When the solenoid pulls in, mm. watch that wheel, yeah. and your rudder moves. Disengage it, Stops. We know that there's a resistance in this motor because we checked it earlier mm -hmm. with, with your multimeter. We know that this coil is faulty. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And it's coming out of that little breather hole there, look. Can you smell the burning plastic? Yeah, this is what I feel I smell actually. Yeah. Oh, it's now burnt out completely. It's so if you smell that now, let's take it. It's all burnt on the inside. The coil has got really hot. That in there is one end of the coil and that has got extremely hot at some time. That's where it connects to this wire there, look. And it's actually burnt out there. It's really simple 
piece of engineering. It's just an electromagnet which causes this to move and hold that. The cable is actually dipped in an, an isolator, like a varnish. Now that's where your insulation's broken down. Can you see it there? It's all melted. And the current has been out of jump from one of those strands. So all of that gearbox, to me, feels pretty damn good. But that is definitely cause your problem. You might get a second hand one, you go onto eBay, you might find that there's a Chinesey one made. I don't think we'll be able to rewind it to be honest. All I would do with this is I'll get some emery cloth and just clean this up mm. here because that is a mating surface mm. to that. Like that. I would just, just lightly rub some grease over it with your finger but, but no more than that. Unfortunately we couldn't source one in Spain, we had to send back to the UK to get one. Uh, it took a few weeks to get delivered. So the new clutch switch has arrived um, and hopefully we'll get it fit today. Um, we got a new one which is about 181 pounds, it's about 200 euros. Um, we sent the old one back to get recoiled, I wasn't sure whether that was possible so in the meantime I did get a new one so hopefully if the new one can get recoiled then we can use it as a spare. So after Ant's excellent tutorial um, I had the confidence to put it together and reinstall it myself. Because the clutch is a 12 volt clutch, I'm going to connect it straight to the batteries. So we've got it freewheeling at the moment, yeah, on the clutch switch, and as soon as I connect the negative, that should hopefully connect together. Yeah. And no smoking or burning smells this time. Yeah. So that is fully engaged there. So I think we might have done it. The rewiring probably took longer than the rest of the job put together. First the clutch switch wires. This is such a fiddle. And the blue's popped out again. <sighs> you need to be a gynecologist to get your fingers in there to actually get the wires in place it's so like you need three pairs of hands right I think the only way I'm going to do this is trim the wires and try and get them in separately with a bit more yep that's the negative in yes then the motor drive wires have to trim those and then get them back into here. Okay, so I, th I think this is the problem, is the clutch goes in here and the fuse for the clutch is here, but it's not obvious that these two are connected. Um, it does say clutch up here on the outside of the box and if the fuse is over to this side, it's on a 24 volt system and if it's over to that side, it's on the 12 volt system. Now, when we checked it, it was actually in the 24 volt system, so whether it was installed wrongly or put there by a previous owner, I don't know. But I think that is the reason that that clutch switch burnt out. Um, the boat is in no fit state to go anywhere at the moment. So I'll let you know in a few months time how we get on with that.
So comment below with any hints, tips, advice on the subject of uh, autopilots. Um, let's share the knowledge. Let's pass it on to everybody so we can increase that knowledge pool to everybody in, in the Liverpool community. For this particular job, which is the Autohelm Rotary Drive, I'd just like to thank the guys from the AMO Forum and uh, obviously Ant as well. So thanks for watching. Please give us a thumbs up, a like, uh, click on the notification bell and subscribe. And it goes without saying thanks to our patrons who support us in everything we do uh, from the production costs to advice. If you'd like to become a patron and share on our journey on a more personal level, it's very easy. Just click on the link in the description on any of the videos and that'll take you to the Patreon website where you just follow the instructions. Thanks for watching.